Hello and welcome to Money Control. Today we are in conversation with Mr. Vikram Limay, MD and CEO of National Stock Exchange. Mr. Limay, pleasure having you here with us. Thank you very much. So let me begin by asking you, what's your own philosophy towards money and what's some of the best advice that you have received from your mentors on how to manage money? So, you know, I come from a fairly humble background and therefore, um, uh, for those of us who come from a, ha from a humble background, I think we are very conscious and we do attach a lot of value uh, to money. And therefore, generally I've found that, um, at least as I can speak for myself, I'm relatively conservative when it comes to my investment philosophy. And therefore, um, the kind of investments I make are um, based on my risk appetite. And that's broadly uh, the philosophy that most people should adopt. You should try and understand what your risk appetite is and then allocate money based on uh, what kind of risk capital you have, what kind of money uh, you're prepared to lose. Because when you invest in uh, risky securities, you should be prepared to lose money. And it should therefore only be an appropriate amount of money that uh, you're willing to lose based on your own uh, uh, philosophy, your risk appetite, what your financial uh, situation is, what your goals are, etc., etc. So my my philosophy or my personal style has been fairly conservative from an investment standpoint. So what's the sense uh, you get when you speak to youngsters? Uh, are they excited about investing in equities? I think the equity culture in the country has come a long way over the last several years. And what I find is that the flows into mutual funds is one indication of that that there are a lot of people who are now allocating a portion of their savings in mutual funds. Part of it has to do with the positive experience people have had over the last couple of years with the markets um, actually you know, providing pretty good returns relative to other asset classes. And therefore what I find is that even uh, youngsters who are taking up their first jobs are also allocating a portion of their savings and salaries towards equity, which is a healthy trend. My hope is that they're allocating an appropriate amount uh, that is uh, commensurate with their savings and risk capital that they have. But it is a positive trend because these are youngsters who have 25, 30, 40 years of working life. And uh, as we know, equities as an asset class over long periods of time has uh, provided returns that are significantly higher than other asset classes. So as long as these uh, youngsters are going to be investing in markets on a systematic basis, it would be a positive thing. And that's the trend that I find because SIPs as a part of mutual funds has also been growing. And that's a very positive trend. The one big trend change that we have seen over the last year is the domination of uh, retail investors as can be seen from the massive inflows into domestic mutual funds. Now more investors are putting money through the mutual funds uh, and getting, gaining exposure to the stock market rather than investing it directly. So as an exchange, what does this mean for you? No, I think it's a positive thing from a market perspective because at the end of the day you want retail investors to have a positive experience of markets and for investors to try and take calls on specific securities is not easy for the common man right you have to follow the stock you have to understand the company you have to understand the sector you have to understand government policies then you've got to monitor corporate performance you have to make the decision when you should be selling based on what's going on with the company or the sector it's very hard for the common man to do this. It's much better for uh, uh, the person to really uh, provide that capital to a professional manager who can stay on top of what's going on with the company or, or the markets. And so from that perspective, it's, it's actually a positive trend. And um, it's, it's positive for markets because ultimately the flows into mutual funds are being invested in markets. So as a stock exchange, what is the role of the NSE in, in promoting the culture of equity investing in the country? It's very important and you know we uh, at NSE as well we, we spend a lot of time and energy on investor awareness programs. We do that on our own, we do that uh, with uh, asset management companies, we do that with SEBI through various stakeholders. And um, you know we run almost 2000 investor awareness programs in a year all across the country. And that's, um, that's very important because I think the equity culture needs to expand. Uh, the only way that you will increase the allocation of money uh, from household savings to markets is if more people are aware of uh, what investing in markets means and uh, you educate them on the kind of products that are available. I mean, right now you have only about 5% of household savings going into equities, which is a very small number relative to emerging markets or developed markets. And that number has obviously grown over time. So we're at you know 5 6% despite the growth that you've seen in the last couple of years. So we have a long way to go. But an essential part of that uh, intermediation of savings into markets is investor awareness and education. 
because you want to make sure that people who are investing in markets understand the risk, understand what product they're investing in, what it means to invest in that product, what time horizon they should be thinking about, what they should be evaluating before making an investment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, I think investor awareness and education is exceedingly important. While a lot of people are doing it, I think a lot more can be done. Uh, we can have more creative ways of making investor awareness and education more interesting and more effective from a technology perspective as well as in terms of the kind of programs you do. Besides uh, investor education, what are some of the other policy initiatives that you feel are required to channelize more of household savings into equities? See, I think fundamentally uh, you have to make sure that trust in markets is not only maintained but is built in our case, right? Because historically uh, the trust in markets has been low in India in terms of perception of equity markets uh, amongst the common man. And therefore, what you, what you want to do is, over time, make sure that more and more people believe that the equity markets are safe, can be trusted, are well-governed, well-monitored, well-regulated, and therefore, people are willing to allocate a portion of their savings to equities. So we have come a long way in terms of people's trust in equity markets. We have to make sure that that trust is not only maintained but enhanced and that more people are willing to therefore allocate money to uh, the equity markets. Like today, people are absolutely comfortable uh, allocating money to fixed deposits. This is because inherently people trust banks and people trust the fact that if I make a deposit, I will get my money back. Not that in equities you should expect to get a return or you should expect to get your money back. But at least you should expect that uh, market practices are such that they are well regulated and uh, uh, the common man is not going to be hurt because he can trust market. Well, thank you, Mr. Lima. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much. And that's all that we have in uh, this session. Thank you for watching Money Control. Mm -hmm.